if you're living in the past, you're going to be depressed because you are rehashing things that happened to you that are not going to happen again. If you're living in the future, you're going to be anxious because you are anticipating what's coming or you're wishing for things that aren't happening yet. Being in the present is where the gold is. Being in the present moment is where you will have the greatest control, where you will feel the most at ease, and where happiness flourishes. There's a super tight connection between happiness and the ability to live in the present moment. A lot of people believe that happiness is tied to the things that happen to you. Not so at all. In fact, there is a uh, professor of positive psychology. He's one of the grandfathers of the movement. He teaches at the University of Pennsylvania. His name is Martin Segelman, and he's studied happiness for decades. Now, one of the things that we've talked about a lot is that 40% of your happiness levels are preset by genetics. 60% you are in complete control of. And one of the things that this professor has, has discovered is that it doesn't matter what's happened to you. In fact, some of the people that have had the worst things, the worst things happen to them, like people that have survived the Holocaust, are actually the happiest and most grateful people in the world. Happiness comes down to this right up here. It comes down to your thoughts, it comes down to your mindset, it comes down to your attitude, and you are 100% in control of what you're thinking. You may not be in control of how you feel in the moment, but you can always, 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 always be in control of what you think. And that will change how you're feeling. One of the most powerful things that you can do in terms of think, and this gets back to Strick's question, is how do you be present? Being present is literally nothing more than the skill of having your thoughts be in this moment, not in the past, not in the future, but right here. The way that you teach yourself how to do that is that the moment that you catch yourself being distracted, the moment you catch yourself starting to worry, the moment you catch yourself drifting to the future, or drifting to the past, that's a moment of tremendous power because you basically just woke up. You basically just noticed that you're not here in this particular moment. So use that wake up call, five, four, three, two, one, and ground yourself in this moment. The best way to ground yourself in the moment is to look for something in this particular moment that you can savor. Now I'm using the word savor on purpose because it's the word that psychologists use to describe what happens when you find something in this moment right now, right here, right now, to focus on and to appreciate. It could be literally the questions. These are, these are printed out questions from people on social media. And if I were to stop and look at these and savor them, what I would feel in this moment is a tremendous amount of gratitude because people are taking the time to write and that makes me feel incredibly grateful and it also makes me very happy because it means that that the folks that are writing are taking control of their lives and seeking out the information that they need. Another form of savoring that we can all relate to is eating. As you're eating, instead of drifting to the future and thinking about all the things that you need to do or, or hanging out in the past and rehashing everything that's happened during the day, be in this moment, in this meal. Slow down. Think about the food that you're eating. Think about the people that you're sitting with and how you feel about them. And if you want to take it up a notch, actually acknowledge them. Hey, this food tastes amazing. Thank you for cooking. Or I'm so glad to see you and that we get the time to have this meal together. Those small, simple acts of savoring are how you expand your happiness inside the present moment. So how do you be more present? Simple. The moment that you catch yourself in the future, in the past, worrying, whatever, refocus yourself right here, right now, and then find something right here, right now, that you can savor. And when you do that, you're not only going to be present, you're going to feel more grateful, and you're going to feel a little boost of happiness. Every single one of us who both dreams and creates things faces voices of dissent, both from people that we know, from people that we don't know, and very often the most deadly comes from within. And if we don't take a thoughtful, conscious approach to taking on our unrealistic dreams, they just ain't gonna happen. But if you are up for the challenge, and I think you are, here are five steps that can help. Step number one is 
frame your dream. And here's what this means. We can't become what we can't envision. So when I say frame your dream, what I mean is I want you to take a picture of it in your mind's eye in vivid, specific detail. And then what I want you to do is translate that picture into words, meaning write down that big unrealistic dream. And I know that you may have heard about the power of writing things down before, but the truth is most people just don't do it, which is so crazy because the research is conclusive on this. There was a study done by Dr. Gail Matthews that shows that you are 42% more likely to achieve your goals if you write them down. So what I want you to do is whip out your journal or hop on that keyboard and get writing. Step number two is filter opinions and fend off negativity. You've got to take responsibility for the energy that you allow in your life. I want you to fend off negativity as much as humanly possible. You know, we know so much more about the brain than we did just 20 years ago. Neuroscience has taught us incredible things like that our brains are continuously shaped by our thoughts and our experiences. And you know this to be true. I mean, negativity is one of the most toxic forces on the planet. It's toxic for your brain, for your nervous system, and for your ability to stay motivated. So do me this favor, okay? Do not solicit or listen to the opinions of people who are notorious for just being Debbie Downers. The one mistake that I've seen people make consistently is they almost habitually talk to the exact person who is the most likely to shoot them down and make them feel like crap. So don't do that. And here's another key. I want you to always, always, always consider the source. Meaning, don't put a lot of stock into other people's opinions unless they're actually out there consistently taking risks and being brave and actually making things happen. I mean, if you think about it, let's say, I don't know, you wanted to climb Mount Everest. Would you ever take advice from someone who's never even attempted the summit? No, of course not. That would be crazy. So don't take advice from anyone unless you really think it through. And I want you to ask, has this person achieved an unrealistic or impossible dream? Are they taking meaningful risks on a consistent basis? Do you admire who they are, how they live, and what they contribute? If not, do not use them as a sounding board for your idea. We think about the era that our parents lived, okay? Um, Great Depression, yeah. right? Um, very, very hard to make money, very, very hard to find resources, very, very hard to, to do anything unless you're a professional. So our parents said to most of us, if you don't become a professional, uh, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle and suffer. And even the professional said, okay, so become a professional and here's your ceiling of what you have. So we became conditioned to be worried of scarcity in a world that has no scarcity. We became conditioned to having certain beliefs about what's possible or not possible. So even now, you know, as we as we you know we're sitting here and we've got this, you know, amazing election time. Crazy. You know, one of the things I've been thinking about is, you know, there are some people that believe that if Donald Trump wins, they're gonna make a fortune, and there's other people that think they're gonna lose everything. And I have a friend of mine who has got about seventy million dollars in the bank that believes that if Hillary gets into office, he's gonna lose millions. Wow. It's gonna be really tough. And what really is you know, going on in people's heads, it's, it's all of their references, their beliefs and their perceptions that are locked away in the implicit part of their brain that is driving those thoughts and even the behaviors. They may not even be aware of it. They're not even aware of it, yeah. yeah. They can be, but they may not be. And so what we really have to go back to to focus on is it really makes no difference who becomes president or who doesn't. If you have the belief that regardless of what happens in your external world, you can navigate towards the success that you want. That's a belief. And beliefs are the lens by which we actually see the world and by which we behave. And so if you want to change your results, don't focus on changing your behaviors. Change your focus on the beliefs that drive your behaviors. Mm. Right? 